I am in Onshape and I'm going to create a crankshaft part using some master sketches. It's the same crankshaft part that I created in Creo Parametric and I'm doing it in Onshape to see some of the similarities and differences. I have my engine document open. It's got a part studio consisting of a connecting rod and a piston pin. In part studio two, I have the piston part that I made. Let's create a new part studio. I'll click the plus sign and create part studio. Here I have my different planes in here. Let's start off by creating a sketch on front. And now I can right click and view normal to my sketch. I don't need to see my planes anymore, so I'll use the keyboard shortcut of P to turn off their display. Let's start off with a couple of our main circles. And I'm going to snap this in, and this is going to be a value of about 120. That's good. Let's create another circle up here. It's going to be about a value of 100. What will help me right now is if I start throwing on some of my dimensions. Let's select the bottom circle, and I want this to be a value of 120. And the top circle, I want this to be a value of 100. And let's dimension the vertical distance between the two circles. And I want this to be a value of 140. All right, so that is good to start off with. Let's now try putting in a couple of our lines. Let's sketch in. See, I want a line from here down to about over here and then going out at an angle. Let's right click and escape out of the line. I'm going to use a construction line. Let's use construction mode and put in a vertical line. And it snaps right in there. Let's make it vertical. I'm going to use this for mirroring. Right click, escape out of line. Let's click on the mirror tool. Select a mirror line. Select entities to be mirrored. That is good. Now let's go to the arc command. I want to do a center point arc. I'm going to do an arc that's centered on there. Snap into there. Snap into there. Let's see. I need three more arcs in here. But instead of doing a center point arc, we're going to do a three point arc. And I want one here. And about over here. And bend it out so much. Let's escape out of the arc command because I am going to mirror once more. And for my last geometry, let's throw in another three point arc. There we go. And it turns gray because I have enclosed volumes. Now let's start putting in our dimensions. Let's hit the dimension button, and I want this to be a radius of 235. I want to have an angle between here and here, and this angle is going to be a value of 150. Uh, let's see what else do I want in here. Let's do the radius of this arc. This radius is going to be 200. I want the distance between these lines. Let's make this a value of 225. And it's starting to come together. Let's see some of the other dimensions that I want. I want the height of this line. And this is going to be 130. Let's see, the dimension that I want is going to be from here to there. And this is going to be a value of 230. And now I want a dimension from this center to here. And this is going to be a value of 240. And let's see, I also want from here to there. And this is going to be a value of 250. All right, that is good. Everything has turned black, which means that everything should be fully dimensioned. I'm happy with this first sketch. Let's hit the check mark to get out of the sketch and then rotate over here. For our first extrude, I'm going to select this face over here. 
let's hit the extrude tool and I'm going to extrude this a big distance let's change this to 1200 so that is going to end up creating my first solid and creating my part let's hit the check mark in here it automatically hid my sketch let's go to it in the feature list and hit the eyeball to show it now for my second one I'm going to extrude everything in the sketch so I can just select the sketch and then hit the extrude button and for this we're going to do our first step is going to be a value of 590 and I'm going to do a second end position and for this depth rather than going in that direction I'm going to drag it out over here and we we'll see that it is adding material and the value that I want in the other direction is going to be 340 and for some reason it looks like this is removing material let's make sure that we are adding material I'm just going to select that other face in there so that is good let's hit the check mark for this extrude and for the final one this is going to be a little different than in Creo parametric in Creo parametric I would take this one and extrude it and remove material and remove material to the outside those options are do not appear to be in on shape but no problem right? it's just a different way of thinking let's uh, select the extrude tool and I'm going to select this face and this face as well let me make sure I get it oops didn't get it I accidentally deselected the first one but anyhow let's start off by dragging this in here and this is going to actually remove material and let's change this to a value of 515 let me flip the direction and you see that right now it's previewing everything that is going to go away uh, let's add a second end position and for the second end position I'm gonna drag this here we start seeing what I want to get and the second end position this is going to be a value of 415 and I want to get rid of an additional face let's select alright I'm using select other to select that as well as this there we go now I got it I'm using those two particular faces and that way I'm just retaining what's inside of that other region there so that's good let us hit the check mark and that way I've gotten all the geometry that I want from sketch one I no longer need to see it let's turn off its display and I can show the plane called right because that is what I am going to sketch on next so let's hit the sketch button select right as our sketch plane let's view normal to the sketch plane and essentially three different entities I'm going to put in here let me start off I know that I'm going to revolve some stuff so let's put in a construction line and I like how again it just snaps automatically to the middle in there that's nice and make it horizontal let's escape out of the line tool and then on this end I'm gonna sketch a bunch of lines and I'm gonna just sketch let's see this is going to be horizontal and then add an angle and then over here and then there and let's escape out of the line let's see I want to make some changes in here let's choose to make this vertical and also make it coincident and I notice I'm not able to make it coincident to that imaginary silhouette edge there that's okay let's escape out of the coincident constraint I can do what I need with dimensioning let's hit the dimension tool and I want to control this and I want this to be value of 205 
let's control this and I want this to be a length of 325 and a couple other dimensions in here let's do the dimension from here to here and by dragging out over here I can change the value to 120 which I know is the diameter of that lobe over there and the other dimension I want is from here to here and then drag it beyond the construction line and then I can change this to a value of 80. So that's good for the entity on that side. On this other side, let's sketch in a rectangle and I want the rectangle from here and it's snapping into that entity over there. That's good. Let's then go into dimensioning and the dimensions I want over here. I want this to be 120 and I want this to be 20 and then I can do the dimension from this line to this over here and drag it out there we go here I'm getting my diameter and again I know that I want this to be 120 so that's good on that side and one other sketch I'm gonna put in here uh, I'm not going to use it for revolving I'm actually going to use it for extruding the key I'm going to put in a circle and let's put about yay big for now. Let's click on our dimensions and I know that I want this to be a value of 130. I want to control the distance from the center to this over here. I want this to be 97.5 and the last dimension that I want is going to be from there to there and I want this horizontal distance to be 257. All right, that is good for everything in sketch number two. Let's hit the check mark. And now I'm ready to revolve some geometry in order to remove material. And so I'll do the revolve and now it wants me to select my different faces. Let's select this face. And right now it's saying, hey, I don't know what I want to revolve around. Let's select this over here. We start getting the preview, but I need more faces in here. So let's select this face and this face and one more face. Let's get this one over here. And right now it's adding material. Let's choose to remove material. The merge scope is part one. That is good. Let's hit the check mark in here. And the material's been removed. Sketch 2 has been hidden. Let's bring it back because I want to create an extrude now. And for the extrude, oh, there I had it a second ago. There we go. I'm going to extrude this. And I'm going to remove material. Let's change the depth to symmetric. I want this to be a value of 30. So that way I get my little key created in there. Hit the check mark for that extrude. And I no longer need to see sketch 2, so let's hide it using the eyeball. And put in some of our finishing features like some chamfers and some rounds. Here is the chamfer tool. Let's select this edge over here. And let's see. I want also this one and this one and this one. By the way, one note for those of you who use Creo Parametric, I was just picking them without the control key. So that is a difference in selection. Let's change that to a value of 20. That's good. Let's hit the check mark. Now I will create a, another chamfer feature for this edge over here so let's go to the chamfer tool and select this one and instead of using equal distance I'm going to do distance by angle and let's use a distance the angle is going to be 15 degrees and right now I think I need to flip opposite direction and for the distance this is going to be a value of 30 there we go that looks the way that I want it to let's hit the check mark to complete the chamfer and lastly, I just need to throw in some rounds over here. 
let's click on, or excuse me, fillets. Let's throw in some fillets over here. And so the edges I want to fill it. I'm just, again just doing a bunch of left mouse picks. Let's increase these right now just so you can start to see them. And the same edges on the other side. So that's good for that chamfer. Let's hit the check mark and throw in oops, fillet. Uh, that's good for that fillet. Let's throw in some other different fillets in here. Edge, 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 and then edge. Change the value to 10. That's good for that one. Let's hit the check mark. And last fillet that we're throwing in here. We're going to throw the fillets on this edge over here. Uh, by the way, you'll notice the option for tangent propagation is checked. Well, I'm over here. Might as well change the value. Let's make that 10 and then select this edge as well. And this edge and that edge over there. That is good. Let's hit the check mark. And now I've got my geometry created. Let's hide the plane called right. And so, again, a lot of the techniques were very similar. So if you know one package, you should not have any trouble picking up the other. Let's right-click on part one and choose to rename this. And this is going to be my crankshaft. And also, we can right-click on it and assign a material. And the material for this one, I'm using the Onshape Material Library. Let's scroll down in here just to... Some of the different values that I have not used yet. Let's see. Let's go with just a regular steel. Hit the check mark. And lastly, edit the appearance. And let's see. What color do I want to use for this one instead? Uh, a little too bright. Let's try. There we go. I haven't used the green before. And that way we have our part created. Again, most of the geometry done with just a couple of sketches and then a bunch of finishing features. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creolewindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.